Let's be in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks. We thank you, Lord, for all the many different ways you touch our lives. We thank you, Lord, as we approach this Easter season uh, for the joy of, of your son's uh, resurrection and the new life that is promised to, to each of us. Lord, we know that before that comes the cross. And we lay our lives before you in gratitude for all that you have given. In the name of our Savior, amen. I had a good friend uh, who uh, was at a family reunion in the park. And so he was going up to the public restroom uh, and uh, his little nephew, who was all of about six years old, came up with him. Uh, and uh, as he left the restroom, he heard the young boy start to scream. And that, of course, you know, hey, you know, you, you strikes fear into anybody's heart. Went running back up, and the little boy came out to meet him, yelling, Uncle Bill, Uncle Bill, you forgot to wash your hands. <laughs> So he washed his hands. <laughs> today's, uh, uh, today's story of, of uh, Mary, this, is, uh, this isn't Mary the mother of Jesus or uh, Mary Magdalene. This is uh, Mary who is the sister of Martha and Lazarus. So Lazarus, who was raised from the dead, was the brother of this Mary. Uh, and they lived in Bethany in apparently a fairly nice house. Because Jesus uh, stays in Bethany occasionally with all of his disciples. Uh, and we think he was staying there with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. So this is the Lazarus who has just been raised from the dead. Uh, and he and his disciples are, are here getting ready for the Passover when Jesus will be put on the cross, uh, die, and be buried. Uh, and... While the disciples never really were able to process what Jesus was telling him, as he told him over and over again that this is what was before him, uh, there was a spirit about it that they realized. At one point, when he says, I'm going to Jerusalem before this, uh, Thomas says, uh, well, if he's going to Jerusalem, let us go so that we might die with him. So there was an attitude about her that this was very, very, the, the, the conflict that, that Jesus was facing was one that would uh, eventually lead to his death. So he comes here, and Mary uh, has this, this, uh, this um, perfume that she's bought to anoint him, and probably to anoint him uh, on the, the time of his burial. So she, she bought it for that, for that reason, to anoint him. And instead, she decides to use it while he's still alive. And when you think about it, that's quite, that's quite joyous, isn't it? That, uh, that, that she wants to share this with he and the disciples, and so puts a pound of perfume on him. Now, you know, and pure perfume, you can imagine, you know, this isn't, this isn't the toilet water or whatever they call it now. You know, I mean, this was, this was real perfume, a pound of it. Cost a whole year's worth of salary. And... Uh, uh, and and she, she puts it on him out of gratitude, out of giving thanks because he's raised Jesus from, he's raised Lazarus from the dead. And, uh, and, so, and so there's this, this attitude that she has, this gratitude, and, and the whole house is filled with the scent of it, with the, with the scent of, of her gratitude. Uh, now, Judas sees this, and he gets a little upset and says this money should have uh, been given to the poor, but then the little note says he was just stealing all the money anyway. But, but that's, not what, <laughs> that's, not what, what, uh, yeah, that's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus is quoting to him from the Old Testament. And, uh, and, and we see it, and we say, boy, well, that's sort of cold of Jesus to say don't worry about the poor. That's not what he's saying at all. When it says the poor will be with you always, it is the commandment that we have to give to the poor over and over and over again. The poor, the poor will be with you always in the Old Testament means that, that we have to, 
uh, you know, we have to give and then give and give again, and, they, and, and we will always have to give. That we're not going to be able to take care of poverty in a way that the giving will not be required of us. And, uh, and, and, and we as a church know what that means. The, the, that it always seems like there's more and more need and more to be given. As, as I share in the meditations, those of you who are receiving the email meditations, uh, we've had a little bit about, uh, about uh, how much is given for the poor. And, and our church alone gives $140 million every year for taking care of the poor around the world. <laughs> not, not Sun City. No, yeah. no that's, that's not us. Yeah. But, but you know what? Uh, with all of that, year after year, there's still a lot of poverty out there. And, you know, the Roman Catholic Church gives even more than we give. I mean, it's, it's, it is remarkable the amount of need around the world. Uh, and, and Jesus says, with the Old Testament, we're called on to take care of the poor. And over and over and over. That's what he's saying here. He's not saying ignore them. He's saying take care of them. So Mary has this perfume, uses it on on Jesus, and the whole house is filled with the, with the scent of her love. When, uh, when the, the current uh, pope came uh, to, to be pope, one of the first things he did was went to an orphanage and washed the feet of the a juvenile hall, juvenile detention center, and washed the feet of the, of the boys that were there. And there were people who said, you know, some of those boys were Muslim. And he said, all are children of God. We are all children of God. We all, uh, the, the, the span of, of our embrace has to reach all people everywhere because we are all, all children of God. Uh, so, so Jesus is prepared for burial. And the room is filled with the, with the scent of love, we are called on to be the ones that give this beautiful scent of God's love to the world and share with the world like Mary shared with Jesus. We are, we are called on to be the ones that take care of each other. Now, we didn't have much of a, of a confession today. Uh, and the reason, and this is Lent, and we've been doing confessions through Lent, it's, it's almost over. You almost don't have to deal with it anymore. You know, so, you know, but, but, you know, because we're doing the old form of communion, and let me tell you, it's all full of confession. I mean, although, you know, we have not, you know, we have sinned, we are not, you know, worthy to untie it, it's all that stuff. And, uh, and, and I like to do it at least once during Lent. Uh, because this is what I grew up with, and I know this is what you grew up with, uh, because it wasn't until 68 we had the modern service that we normally use. What it actually is, is the translation of the Latin Mass. And so when we were using this, and the Episcopal Church and other churches, all, all of Christians everywhere were using these words in different languages uh, around, around the world. And I think that's really neat. Now we do, do all sorts of different things. And we like our sung version. You know, but but I I think that I, I like this especially during Lent because we can pause and reflect on the the magnitude of what we are called on to do. You know, Mary gave this perfume a whole year's worth of wages, and and we are we can reflect on the magnitude of what we are called to do and the fact that we really are not able to do it as well as we wish we could. And I think that's, that's part of, of this, whole, this whole taking care of the poor, taking care of, of each other, is that we do the best we could, and at the same time we recognize that, that we do not do this perfectly, that we do the very best we can. Mary, <laughs> sounds, like, sounds like she did it pretty close to perfectly as, uh, as uh, she shared this with Jesus, with the disciples, as they shared getting ready for, for the cross and for Jesus' death. Uh, and, and as we look at the cross, we remember that it is not only the, the low point of human history, but it was that which opened the door to the great joy 
of the resurrection. And that oftentimes we're in the, in the middle of the low point, we don't realize that, that that's what it is. Now Mary didn't realize that the cross was right around the corner. Within the week, Jesus will be put on the cross and die. This is just before Holy Week. This is, this is two days before Palm Sunday. And, and so the, 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 the cross is there, but in a little bit more than a week, the resurrection will be there. And what does Paul say? Paul says, because Jesus has been raised from the dead, we know that our loving God has the power to raise us from the dead. And so we can be assured that we will be raised with him. That that, uh, in the resurrection of Christ, it's more than just for him, it's for all. Or else the resurrection of Christ loses its power. That all of us have heaven waiting for us. And, and so, you know, in spite of our failures, in spite of the fact that we don't live up to the words we say so often, heaven is waiting for us, and we give thanks. And I'd like to close with a story, a story about heaven waiting for us. Uh, when I first church, there was a guy there, ran the town hardware store. This was a, this was a, a one stoplight town. They put in another one and we rejoiced that we had two stoplights. You know, that's, uh, it was Fillmore way back when it was, uh, agricultural center. Uh, still had the old, uh, orange processing, uh, um, buildings. And, uh, and so he ran the hardware, the town hardware store. And he told a story about, uh, his his grandmother, his grandmother was the wife of a Native American chief who had taken all the money that the government gave and used it all on himself and left his people in poverty. And he died. And his grandmother took that money and gave it all away. Lived in a one-room shack with, he says, newspaper for a floor. She went from the mansion that she sold to the shack because she was a Christian. And uh, when, when he died, when she died, Harvey was there, her little grandson and her family. She died with her family all around her. And the doctor, uh, you know, who went from door to door back then, uh, declared that, that she was dead, walked out the door. She sat up. She looked around at the family, looked, Harvey said, right in his eyes, and said, I've been to heaven, and it's beautiful. And then she lay back and died. I've been to heaven, and it's beautiful. You know, we're not perfect, but we have a perfect heaven waiting for us. So as we come to this cross, we grieve. And at the same time, we remember that on the other side of the cross is the joy that awaits each and every one of us. Amen? Amen.